Nearly 43,000 women in the U.S. were expected to die by the end of this year from breast cancer. 43,000. Now, by comparison, that would be like wiping out every single person in Findlay and then some. Staggering, isn't it? The more you study the statistics, the more you realize too many times we're losing people to the disease because of a lack of access to care. Here's Jeff Smith with more on how you can help. My dad's side of the family, his mother and two... Jackie Highland Barronsweg is a fighter. She's had to be, with a family history of breast cancer that goes back years. You see, her sister, Polly Highland Tracy, was a mother of three when she was diagnosed at age 35. She lost her battle in 1990, and in 1991 became the namesake behind Toledo's Polyball Breast Cancer Fundraiser. I was so adamant that I didn't want that to happen to me that I was my own best advocate. Remember, I said Jackie was a fighter. She too, a mother of three, and diagnosed just six years ago. But today, she is cancer free. And this year's 29th race for the cure means so much. There's nothing better than if you're a survivor going to race day, and every year you get a mark, okay, it's one more year, it's one more race, I've made it is the best feeling in the entire world. And then to be able to do that surrounded by your closest friends and family, there's really nothing better. Coming out of the pandemic, Susan G. Komen, Northwest Ohio Executive Director Gretchen Awad says, sure, the race is a wonderful community event, but she says it also serves a bigger purpose. It acts as a reminder. You know what? I haven't gotten a mammogram or I did have something that I didn't follow up with my doctor about. We hear stories like that over and over and it's one of the blessings of my job is people come up to me and say, you don't know me, but I know you. And let me tell you what Race for the Cure did for me. Another example of it being a reminder, the message the race sends to our youth, the power of pink at a soccer game and what it means going forward. I mean, it's great. I love wearing these, I'm so happy that someone was able to um, chip in and bring us these jerseys. When it takes that personal feeling and it affects so many people, it's just something, it's a little something that we can do. Komen is the second largest nonprofit breast cancer researcher next to the federal government. And Awad talks about Komen's 360 degree approach to someday living in a world without it. We want to make sure that we are following the paths to make sure that every woman and man has equal and equitable access to health care. Not every race event in the country did come back, but we did, and a national organization recognized the importance of this strong community and what Race for the Cure means for this community. And what it means for a survivor and a fighter. The day of the race, as a survivor, um, as a, a current fighter, as someone who's lost a loved one, it's a great time to be surrounded, to celebrate in their memory, in their honor, to uh, offer support for someone going through a current battle. Jeff Smith with that report. It's hard to believe next year will mark 30 years, uh, the 30th race in this community. But she points out the community rallied to make it happen this year from the sponsors of the registrations to the volunteers. And please register for this year's Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure. It is Sunday, September 25th, right here downtown. And while everyone, of course, is welcome to come support the breast cancer survivors in your lives on race day, we also encourage you to register and pay the $35 fee, even if you're not walking or running, so that those funds can be used to fight breast cancer, find a cure, and help survivors with everything from mammograms to transportation. We have a link where you can register at WTOL.com.